Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, start of week four here. Uh, now that we have talked about and covered some of the basics and the more kind of conceptual and foundational pieces of R, uh, we're gonna move into some packages. And before we do that, uh, we wanna talk a little bit more about data structure and thinking through how data um, are actually input into R and how you actually organize and structure the data that you collect. This is in part of a, you know, we'll, we'll talk ab about a number of different packages the next several weeks. And those packages are really primarily developed and led under the guidance of Hadley Wickham, who um, has been in the R sphere for quite a while and now is, uh, essentially chief scientist developer in our studio. So he's driving a lot of um, kind of the new recent developments in our studio. But very importantly, I think he has had a tremendous impact in terms of how people use our, the tools they do. Um, and his, you know, uh, I'll just say that a lot of the packages are just making functionality in R easier, simpler, simpler, unifying the language, the kind of the, um, the syntax, et cetera. So uh, you just kind of keep that in your brain. We're gonna dive a little bit into talking about tidy data and I'll explain what I mean by that here in just a second. So data are created, they're input, they're digitized and they're stored in many different ways, right? <clears throat> um, and that might have something to do with the instrumentation, something to do with just the design of the experiment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a lot, a lot of different ways if you do work uh, with data analysis and you know, kind of encounter how various people collect and store data, there's a lot of differences in that, right? There's a lot of kind of um, variation or variety or permutations of that. So um, the issue is that often the format or structure of the data that are stored are really just driven by that ease of data capture input. And it's not driven by the analysis per se. So this is the issue, the rub, that data analysis and statistical packages, including R, often require data to be in a relatively specific structure for us to analyze, okay? So this is really, this whole discussion here is gonna be talking about kind of conceptually how we structure and store data and then uh, put it in, uh, you know, hopefully a tidy format uh, for, uh, for ease of R input and for efficiency of use in R. So is there an easy way to convert from the, you know, the many different uh, types of ways people store data to um, what R needs to actually, you know, run the analysis and, you know, it's, uh, read a number of times that, you know, 80% of data analysis is just getting your data in the right format to actually put it into statistical software and, and run it. And so um, there's tools out there, fortunately for us, there's tools out there that help us do this more efficiently, okay? So I'm gonna start with just uh, some example data and all this that I'm showing you is from uh, Hadley's uh, Tidy Data Paper and I have a link to it at the end of the, end of the slide and I and encourage you to, to read that. It's posted on Carmen. Imagine just a toy, little toy data set like we have here. So there's three elements, okay? There's, uh, there's a, the person, John Smith, Jane Doe, and Mary Johnson. There's uh, treatment, and treatment can, um, can, is composed of treatment A and treatment B. And then there's these results or the actual values that correspond with the person in the treatment, okay? So here's one way to display that data. Uh, and then we can think about, you know, depending on the operator or, or, you know, a lot of other factors, we might store it this way, right? And so instead of the treatment A and B being the columns, maybe treatment A and B are the rows, and then we, we move across, um, you know, working with individual John Smith and Jane Doe and then Mary, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we could think about, you know, yet another way where we have um, treat, treatment A and B not being split up, but actually being in the same column. And then you can see that the, the person here is redundant, right? So we've taken essentially uh, this format and we've stacked treatment A and treatment B on top of each other to, to get this 
third table here. Okay. So which structure is better? Like what's optimal here? Well, that's a hard question. It depends on a lot of things, you know, it depends on how you input the data, what's going to be easier to capture. But from an analysis perspective, the, you know, the, the choice here is obvious and we'll, I won't spoil it for now. We'll keep you in suspense. Okay. So tidy data, tidy data are data uh, that is a standardized way of mapping the meaning of data set to the structure. Well, what does that mean? Well, there's um, kind of conceptually a way that we can think regardless of the data, uh, how we might actually kind of put this in, into a, in our package. Okay. So the whole point of this and why we're talking about this today is that in R, if we have tidy data, it will save you time guaranteed. It's going to greatly speed up the analysis time. And that's a lot of what this class is about. It's just helping you all become more efficient in, um, you know, in the process of R and, and moving around the R environment. Okay, so there's three criteria for tidy data. Finally, I've been talking about this since we started and now I'm gonna define it. And this is of course via Hadley Wickham. So with tidy data, each variable forms a column, each observation forms a row, and then each type of observational unit forms a table. In other words, an observation uh, is in a tabular format, okay? And so let's go back to these, this example, this little small data set and think about this, think through this. Uh, which one of these structures, if any, are tidy, okay? So the first criteria is that each variable forms a column. Well, here in this very first one, we have treatment with treatment A and treatment B. These are separated over two columns. And so if we wanted to say, you know, uh, what's the average of treatment A or B or what's the average of the treatments, uh, we would not be able to do that because it's in two separate columns. So we'd actually have to combine it or run uh, the average on this treatment A column and then on treatment B column, for example. So the first uh, example is not tidy. But what about this example right here? Well, here it says each observation, uh, so each variable forms a column and then each, each observation forms a row. Well, this is, um, again, not tidy because our observations, really the person is forming an individual column, okay? Um, so again, the second, second table here in the middle would not be considered tidy. Then this final table, let's talk about this. Each, form, each variable forms a column. So we have three variables, the person, the treatment, and the result. Each observation forms a row. So we had um, again, observation was John Smith, treatment A, and there's a result. Here, this happens to be, you know, a blank or missing value or non-detectable or whatever it might be. Uh, and so that satisfies that criteria. Each observational unit forms a table. And this the last one's a little bit kind of harder to pick or to actually, you know, um, immediately see. But this idea that we've got observations that are paired with the result or the corresponding value in a tabular form. And that's exactly what we see here, okay? So in kind of that definition, it's really, you know, this is, might not be how you would input data if you were, you know, depending on how it was collected and what the, you know, the variables are. But we would call this third and final table the, the tidy table in this framework, okay? So, you know, okay, well, what are we talking about here? Why is this important? You know, we can put data in any way. And again, uh, the longer you work with data and the, you know, the longer I've been in this business and thinking about it through this lens, this tidy lens, really is important in terms of being able to, you know, move with your data and do something with it right when you bring it into R. And so again, it's this context of efficiency. You might say, well, it's, it's, it's not efficient if we, um, you know, have to write John Smith multiple times, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, hopefully as you work with this and we'll, we'll go through some of these examples to see the, the value of something like this. Okay. So what about messy data sets, non-tidy data sets? So Hadley says basically anything that doesn't satisfy these three criteria are by definition messy. And so if we want tidy, 
we've got to do this. So here's some common examples of messy data sets. So column headers are values, not variable names. Here's an example where we've got, um, you know, counts of uh, religious affiliation by income earning. And so here, you know, this actual bracket of income earning is, is a, a column header. So it's not, um, you know, this is messy by, by that definition. Another example is that there are multiple variables stored into one column. You'll find this quite often. Here's an example of, um, you know, we can compare this table here with this second table over here. So it's a different country year. And then here we've actually got the sex, male, and the age bracket, zero to 14. So it's nested into multiple columns. Um, those are two separate variables, sex and age of the individual. And they're kind of mashed together into the string right here. Well, what if we want to, you know, separate by male and female or look at it by age class? Well, we can't rightly break that up in this format. And so this is what would be considered a messy data set. This would be considered tidy in that regard. Okay. Variables are stored in both rows and columns. Okay. So um, there's a lot of uh, I've encountered uh, data from say, you know, precipitation or weather data, what have you. Here we've got, you know, the site, the year, the month, and then different days of the, uh, days of the month and observations here. So there's, you know, there's days of the month and then there's actually a month as variables and columns. So this is, this is all kinds of wonky and is definitely not tidy, okay? Multiple types of observational units are stored in the same table, okay? So here's an example of really two tables that are jammed into one where we have uh, the year, uh, the, well, actually, if we focus our attention over here, this is really the date and the track and the artist and the week that it's been on like whatever this is, top 40 charts or whatever, and then the rank for that. So this is week one, week two, week three, and then there's ranking. So this is really where it's, it's, it's uh, the information is contained. And then all this piece over here, you know, 2000 Tupac, uh, the time of the track and the, and the track itself, it's just all redundant. So there's really kind of two, different types of data that are crammed into one table. Okay. And so this, this isn't what we would, this is not what we would consider tidy as, as well. So multiple variables, um, there are multiple um, types of observational units are stored in the same table. Okay. And then finally, a single observation, observational unit is stored in multiple tables. So like if you've got, you know, say you've got one particular site, and then you've got, um, say, plant data. Say you took community observation data for plants, and then you took it for, say, species, uh, you know, animals or invertebrates or birds or whatever. And you know, maybe it makes sense to store those in different ways. But if if um, they actually lined up, we could think about putting all those observational units into a single table, okay? So these two, the last two kind of work against each other in the content and that it's really context specific in terms of if you're gonna take, you know, everything and throw it into one, um, into one actual table or does it make sense to break that up into multiple tables? So that's really gonna, again, be context specific, okay? So just an example that Data facilitate, tidy data facilitates analysis. Okay, and this is something that it's I've struggled about how I can really like demonstrate this effectively. But imagine these two examples. We've got two tables. The table on the left uh, appears to be tidy, um, but the the issue here is that there's actually two observations. So there's this element, and uh, let's just say it's uh, temperature data where we've got the max temperature T max and min temperature T min. And then there are associated value with that, okay? But the issue is that these are actually, even though it's a measurement of temperature, they're really two different variables. And they're, you know, we, we, we record both uh, for, you know, for different purposes and we treat them as, as totally separate. It's not a, 
uh, average temperature measurement by day, for example, there's, there's um, the, um, the observational unit is the day, and then the two variables are temperature max and temperature min, okay? And so we can compare and contrast these tables, and really, this would be considered non-tidy by the definition, and here we would consider these tidies, tidy because every, every variable, you know, again, constitutes a, a unique column, and then every observational unit is, uh, is a row, okay? So just to kind of think through this, right? Imagine if you brought this, these data into uh, R and you wanted to ask a simple question like, what is the average T max and T min? Okay, so how we do that? Well, in this format, what we'd really have to do is first, we'd have to index or filter, show me all the observations that were T max and then take the mean, or show me all the the t min, the the minimal uh, temperatures, and then take the take the average of that. So again, that is you know just a simple thing. It's just a, an additional step, but we can imagine multiple steps or multiple you know depending on how messy the data set is, it might take many many steps for that to happen. Okay, whereas if we look at this, we could actually. Um, ask those questions quite easily just by applying the same function mean across uh, you know the, the, these two different variables of temperature max and temperature min okay another example you know what was the warmest nighttime temperature so you can't just say like if you had the data in this format and you said by nighttime temperature I mean like essentially the the t minimum right so that what was the warmest if you took applied the function max to return the maximum value here well you're going to you're going to get the maximum of the of all the data which was um, going to be by default will be the temperature max right not the temperature min so um so just you know some examples and you'll really i'll, I'll, I'll say this now and you know hopefully it makes a little bit of sense but the idea of getting it in this format r is what we call um a vectorized program and that is that you know data frames are made up of vectors of data and R is very good about applying a function uh, throughout that vector it's a vectorized function so you know we can think of this in this kind of spreadsheet format where we can take the average or to apply a um, you know apply a function and it's going to go right through your data set and kind of down that vector and you know down if you will and apply that function across. And so that is, um, again, one of the reasons that tidy data are really important, okay? So I'll just end there. Uh, this is the, the reference and here's the link. I post this in Carmen. Again, a really important concept. And as you kind of think through data and as you get experience with analysis, you'll begin to understand the value. Hopefully you'll begin to appreciate and understand the value of having tidy data and just thinking kind of from a metadata perspective of how we're actually going to structure and bring data into R to facilitate um, analysis and, and make this, you know, make this um, as efficient as we can.